My name is Jared Paul, and welcome to the second episode of my vegan, gluten-free cooking show, Class War Chef. And the DNA of the Class War Chef philosophy is delicious, nutritious, affordable. Working class people do not have money uh, to be going out to eat three, four, five, six, seven, ten times a week, spending all kinds of money. Uh, on this show, we try to focus on ways to eat good, eat healthy, uh, without spending a lot of money. Um, today's show is actually extra special for me because uh, this week marks my 17th vegan birthday. 17 years ago, I learned what factory farming was and I had a meltdown um, and I set myself on a course to figure out how to eat without any eggs, meat, or dairy, without giving any of my money uh, to factory farms whatsoever. Uh, it's been a long journey, but um, you know, I've, I've learned a lot and, uh, you know, I'm actually feeling, uh, I don't know, I'm feeling inspired. So for today, I'd like to share one of my favorite recipes, super tasty, super easy to make, um, healthy and affordable, which is baked glazed sweet potato wedges. Um, works great as an appetizer, as a side dish and even just cold out of the fridge as a midnight snack. Um, it's really one of my favorite things. So come on over to the workstation and we'll, uh, we'll get set up. First, uh, we're gonna jump in and go over the ingredients and tools that we're gonna need for today's show. Um, obviously, sweet potatoes. These are good, fresh, local sweet potatoes from Farmer's Market, Rhode Island. Big up, Farm Fresh Rhode Island and all local farmers here and everywhere. Um, you know, wonderful tasting, local from, you know, just 10 miles away or less. Um, you need a good sharp knife, cutting board, uh, compost bin for any leftover parts that we chop, big large bowl, uh, sea salt, you know, preferably get the sea salt with no anti-caking agents or no other ingredients, just the salt. Ground black pepper, basil, parsley, garlic powder, olive oil, white vinegar, organic fair trade blackstrap molasses. Uh, molasses might be a little strong for some folks who aren't used to it, but I guarantee you, if you start messing with it, uh, it's really good for you. Like any sweetener, we don't want to eat too much of this. We don't want to eat it every day. We don't want to eat it all the time, but this is... Um, just a, 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 the natural separated boil off syrup of, a, of raw sugar cane. And if you get the black strap, um, you know, it, it's a different process, a different part of the boil. It's, it's loaded with iron and potassium and all kinds of minerals and vitamins. So we're going with the organic black strap fair trade molasses. Um, some basic tools, uh, you know, measuring spoons. Good metal spatula, regular uh, knife, fork, cookie sheets, um, rag to wipe our hands when they get dirty, uh, oven mitts, and we're going to start off first by grabbing our sweet potatoes and bringing them on over to the sink for a wash. We're going to wash our own hands first because we're going to be handling and mixing up some things right with our hands. Um, so, get a good wash in there. You're going to be cooking for yourself on a regular basis. Get used to washing your hands. And then we'll bring the sweet potatoes underneath here. You know, we're looking for, just to get off any, any dirt, any residual stuff that might be in there. A good wash for them. Shake them off. And I've already done a bunch of the prep here. Um, so we're gonna kind of go step by step, but I've done a bunch of the prep first to speed up the process. So it's up to you to decide, you know, what shape you want your sweet potato wedges. Um, you know, maybe you have something in mind based off of a, another recipe you saw or something you ate at a restaurant. Uh, for me, you know, I, I like them almost like steak fries. Um, you know, so that's that's how I cut them. Uh, you know, quick tip. We get, it, we get whatever we're cutting set up with our fingers and then we hold it in place with our knuckles. Much less likely to cut our fingers off that way or 
give ourselves a nasty cut. It's a good sharp knife here. You know, this is a good sized piece. You know, for me, I would cut that right down the middle. Come up, come up with pieces like this. Uh, this guy, I'm gonna cut it in half first, and then probably quarter it. You know, I'm not really liking the end of that there. That's a little, it's a little grimy. Uh, so I cut that off, put that in the compost there. This guy's gonna get cut in half as well. Boom. And this guy's real thick, who knows? Maybe we'll cut, cut this one in thirds. Get it positioned strong before we cut. Boom. Yeah, it, it is wide for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this one in half too. Bam. So, we've got some good, nice sized wedges here. Now these are gonna go in our bowl. Uh, this bowl is already prepped, and so what's in this bowl is probably a half cup of organic fair trade blackstrap molasses, um, maybe a quarter cup of white vinegar, a uh, teaspoon of sea salt, and then it's up to you to decide. I mean, I do anywhere from a, a teaspoon or a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon of each uh, basil, parsley, and uh, garlic powder. You know, maybe a half teaspoon or less of, of black pepper because black pepper is strong. Um, but it's up to you depending on, on what you like and what your preferences are. And that's one of the awesomest parts about cooking is that it's so empowering. When you realize how easy it is to cook most of the things that uh, are in, you know, restaurants or, uh, some, you know, somebody else's who's a great cook, that, something that they've prepared for you. When you realize how, how easy it is, it, it's an empowering thing because... You know, you can make anything you want anytime that you, that you crave it. Um, so that mix is already in there, and th there's enough residue in there that I can just take these uh, wedges that we've just cut up and put them right in the bowl. And now we're going to get our hands dirty. Uh, you know, it's a working class show. Uh, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. We're going to wash up later. Uh, the best way to mix this is just to get right in there with your hands, you know. Um, mix it all up. Stir it around. You know, you want to get every inch or every centimeter of these wedges covered. And that molasses um, is really going to make the salt, parsley, basil, pepper, garlic, and everything. St it's real sticky. It's like syrup. So it's, it's going to make all that stuff stick to it. Um, so once we get it good and mixed all around, and if you have time, you know, you don't have to do this as quick as we're doing it now. You can make a glaze like this even more and set it in a bowl overnight to marinate and it'll really get stuck in there even more. But that's it's kind of like some next level stuff if you have more time and you're trying to get fancy. Um, so now you can take a look at it. All those fresh new wedges are mixed up just like the other ones were. You know, you want to go in there and take a quick look. Um, you know, so they look just like the other ones. And now we're going to slide our bowl over the other cookie sheet and we're going to arrange these. I prepared one cookie sheet before. Um, moving right along here and I'm actually going to um, switch over. I'm going to wipe my hands with uh, you know, I like the last wedges. I like to really mix them around in the bottom of the of the marinade here because I don't want any of that to go to waste. And the more marinade on, the richer these are going to taste. <laughs> don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, we cook with love on this show. And, uh, you know, when you cook with love, uh, you imagine the good food that you're cooking, uh, bringing joy and nutrition and happiness into the, the lives and taste buds of the people that we're cooking for and that requires getting our hands dirty sometimes. This is a good uh, dirty grimy uh, cooking rag. It's not a regular dish towel. Um, it's one that I use to dry my hands. I have a couple of these that are different from my regular dish towels. Come right over here to the sink. Clean our hands up a little bit more. Shake them off. Dry up with the other side. Now, you can see these cookie sheets were, were greased. I uh, covered the surface with a small amount of olive oil 
uh, to prevent sticking and you know you can use vegan butter or whatever else that you use um, I definitely recommend that you don't use any kind of spray that stuff is chemicals and it's not good for you it may be easy but it's, it's not good for you but we've already preheated our oven to 400 we've got the oven light on here so you can see um, You get a quick look at those. God, they look so good. They're already shiny and ready for the, you know, for the glaze. Um, we're going to set these in here on, on 400, and those are going to sit there. Uh, those are going to bake and get nice and toasty for uh, for 20 minutes, and then we're going to check on them. They're going to be in there for anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes total, um, you know, depending on, on how quickly they're softening up but it's 20 minutes until we have to check on them for the first time. So, uh, thank you for joining, and we'll see you in 20 minutes. And we're back. Uh, so it's been 20 minutes. We're gonna open up the stove and check on our uh, baked, glazed sweet potato wedges. Here we go. Ah, uh, they smell so good. They don't have smell worked out yet on YouTube. I imagine they will at some point. And you know, I mean, you can just slide out the, re the, the rack and do this that way. If you want to test them, me, you know, I find I burn myself that way. I don't mind just taking them out and putting them on the front of the stove. Um, so we're going to poke these and see how soft they are. Yeah. You know, they're not done yet, totally. Um, but I want to actually take one piece off and cut it just so I can get a sense of it, of whether or not it should be in for another 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But if you get a look at these bad boys, um, I'll let that cool for one second before I take a bite of it. We'll look over here at, at the cookie trays, you know, get, get a look at these wedges. See, they're starting to turn brown and, and, and uh, you know, this, um, uh, you can see the spices is, have stuck to the wedges because the molasses is so sticky like that, you know. And we'll get our spatula underneath here. Just kind of test it and see how things are and make sure it's not sticking too much. Um, you know, just kind of get in there and, and mix them up so it doesn't stick all the way. Shake those up a bit. You know, and in instances like this or it's starting to get black on the bottom, you know, we can flip it. We can flip them. Um, I don't always like to do that. Sometimes. Um, depending on if I feel like it's really going to stick and, and, and burn its way in there. Um, but a little, a little black anyway is good. It makes them taste like barbecue as far as I'm concerned. Um, so we can flip them or not, you know, depending if, if you feel like it's going to burn, if it's really sticking in there. And even if you do think it's sticking in there, that, that's just some of the, re the residual uh, molasses from the beginning. So we just get in and get underneath it. And as long as you break it up, it's less likely to stick. Um, well, I'm going to check on these the same way, shake them up, make sure they're not totally stuck in there. Look at that, look at that glaze, it looks like all barbecue and black on the back there, I like that. Not to me, that looks gourmet. <laughs> um, and now the little piece that we cut over here is going to have cool cooled enough for me to taste it. Uh, nope. I'm good. It's cooking right along. Not where it needs to be yet. But it's getting closer. So, we're going to go with another 20 minutes. Um, and I'm feeling like maybe I, for now, I'm going to bring my heat down to 350. Um, it's got some good color. It's got some good brown going on. It's nice, hot, nice and hot in there. I'm, I'm going to reduce to 350. That's what I'm feeling like. So he's going to go back and draw. We're going to get him softer for another 15, 20 minutes. And we're going to talk about putting on an extra glaze. We'll see you in another 15, 20 minutes. 
and it's been 17 minutes. Um, three minutes shy of the 20 minute mark, but I've been watching and checking on them uh, through the window in here, and it sounds like there's a lot of popping going on in there. Um, sounds like it, it's probably good to check early, which is one of the things that we have to do when we bake and we cook, is constantly be aware of what's going on um, to make sure nothing burns and things don't get out of control. So, let's check it out. At the 17 minute mark instead of the 20 minute mark. Oh, look at these lovelies. They're looking beautiful. Right over there. And so we're just going to check them out. Shake them up. Oh, yeah. Make sure they're not sticking. And this is that one that <laughs> we had a little piece of earlier. That's our tester. That's our canary in the coal mine. Rest in power to all the canaries that had to die <laughs> in coal mines. Rest in power to all the working class miners who came up with the fuel that kept people from freezing to death for the entire 20th century uh, and got paid dirt wages. Um, anyway, class war chef, class war path, away on a tangent, it happens. Um, let's uh, go to our, our tester here and set it up and see how soft it is. Because, you know, I should have poked them all first. Take a bite. Really easy to burn your mouth. Mmm. That is soft. I'm basically done. You get another little piece. Mmm. Pretty much perfect. We're going to stab rest of these to see if they're as soft as that one and what I'm finding now is that a lot of these are even softer than that one um, oh god I love the way these look they look gourmet to me um, so, so yeah these are almost all totally done there's a couple of them that are done but maybe not as soft in the middle but that's okay because we're gonna Put them back in for another five minutes with the molasses on top to get a little added extra glaze. So we're gonna shake these up, flip them back over. I love to cook. <laughs> I don't know, it really, it, it's, become one of my favorite things. You know, not only do I cook delicious, nutritious, affordable things, um, it's time that I'm, I'm not in front of the computer. It's time that I'm not looking at my phone. Um, and then I, I make enough to eat for one sitting, but also for multiple sittings and, and, and to share. And I love sharing, I love sharing the stuff that I cook. You know? I, lo I love feeding people. I don't know, that, that probably comes from my mom. Um, so we're, you know, what we're doing right now is we're just getting these flipped over to the front because we're going to add a little additional, we're going to add an additional glaze, an additional molasses glaze. We'll get them lined up in rows again so that it's easy to put the molasses on. Additional molasses. And what's going to happen is get a little extra glaze on the top and then we're going to bake them again for another five to seven minutes at um, probably at 200 or 250 instead of the uh, instead of the full 350 or 400 um, so we'll get some nice little rows going over here and you know, and some of this stuff gets burned into the bottom of the cookie sheet, but that's what happens with cookie sheets. Cookie sheets get burned. Cookie sheets get damaged. Uh, you know, but for me, I, when all is said and done and I'm cleaning up after, just dump some boiling water on there, like get the kettle going.
heat up some boiling water in the kettle and then pour the boiling water over the top of it and let it sit for a while and then it's much easier to clean. A little elbow grease with a Brillo pad. Um, it ain't no thing. Uh, so, I have been pouring molasses straight out of the bottle for a while. Molasses is really strong, it's really easy to overdo it. Um, I encourage you to go really easy with the molasses when you pour it back over. Um, and like little thin spider webs. And if that seems a lot, um, you can just pour some in a cup and do it with a spoon. But I'm just gonna get some nice little light spider webs going here. Nice little trickle, you know? And sometimes it's a little more, but that's okay. You know, I like a nice little little glaze like this. That's going to add just a little extra, and this is an you know this is an extra touch that I like to do. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You know, and if you find it easier with a spoon, you know, because you can see in, in some of these instances I've poured too much and it, it's a little globby, but I don't mind that because a little glob extra molasses is good. I love molasses, and this same recipe works with um, the fresh uh, local maple syrup. It also works with, uh, you know, and this is sacrilege for a lot of vegan folks, but it works with um, good uh, local uh, organic honey from a small apiary. Um, myself, uh, you know, I've been vegan for 17 years as of this week. I started taking local honey three years ago. I refuse to have honey that comes from some big farm or from a store, but when I know the farmers, when I know the apiary, um, I think it's a beekeeping is a pretty natural process and with the way the bees are dying out from commercial farming and the fructose that they feed them and all the other uh, uh, commercial corporate factors that are leading to the death of the bees, I think the local apiaries are some of the strongest defenses to keeping bees on the planet. Um, so anyway, this works with molasses, maple syrup, or honey and all natural sweeteners. There's no corn syrup, there's no bleach, refined sugar, and none of that, you know, and, and you're going to find that in a lot of cooking, can't go wrong, blackstrap molasses, maple syrup, local honey, um, sorry, hardline vegan folks, I, I, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you, I'm just saying, um, so we're going to put this back in, now we've got a little extra glaze on top of our wedges, You know, I'm actually going to leave it in there at 350. If you feel that it's best that, you know, stuff is sticking it and you want to bring it down to 250, you can. I'm going to leave it at 350 for another five or seven minutes and let that molasses bake in there. And then I'm going to really enjoy these vegan, gluten-free, baked, glazed sweet potato wedges. We'll see you in five to seven minutes. And we're back. It's been just about six minutes. And I'm really excited to see how that last layer of uh, glazed molasses, um, you know, added to the finish of the uh, sweet potato wedges. So come on over and let's take a look. These guys are looking great. I'm going to turn the stove off now. We've been here for a while. These guys are all done and ready to go. While this molasses is still sticky and good, I'm going to put another just a little sprinkle of salt on the top of them. So that it sticks, you know, it'll stick in there right with the molasses. And if you look at these guys, you can see how glistening and good they are. Um, you know, to me that looks like something right out of a magazine. I love it. Um, and uh, let me them up here a little bit. Actually, that was better the other way. I thought I was going to have a better purchase with the mitt, but then I remembered that the square was the square for a reason. Um, oh, just good stainless steel flat spatula is good investment. Um, I, you know, <laughs> have seen cooks using them in diners for years, and I never thought to get one. I just had these clunky plastic ones. And the reality is, 
The plastic isn't good for you because you shouldn't be using plastic for food in most cases. They have all kinds of chemicals in them that melts and gets in your food. Um, but also, it just, it's not as, it doesn't do the job the same way a good flat stainless steel metal spatula does. Um, you know, so we're getting in here. Some of these are a little stuck, but most of them just came right up as you saw. Um, I'm going to get myself a nice little plate here. And now, now comes the best part. Now comes the eating. <laughs> and again, as we said before, uh, these are great in the summer. Um, well, we didn't say that before. What we said before is that they are good as a... Uh, as an appetizer, as a side, or as a midnight snack. Um, but I, it, it, to me, they are kind of a summer food. They're almost like barbecue, um, but they're a treat. They're almost like dessert-like. Some people put cinnamon on them. Sometimes I do when I'm in the mood. Um, you can do whatever you like, obviously. You know, that's one of the things that's most empowering about cooking for yourself is that you know what you like. You know when you want something to be spicier, saltier, richer, etc. Um, you know, so you make it how you want to make it. Um, these, this is something that I just love to make, though. Um, I love to share it. Uh, and that, you know, as we said, the eating is the best part. Um, so, uh, awesome. <laughs> Before we wrap up, I want to say again. Um, Thank you so much for sharing my 17th vegan birthday with me. It's been a long journey. I'm really happy that I've taken it. I feel great. I can still uh, run a mile in eight minutes, um, bike 10 miles. I mean, I'm in, I'm in good shape. Um, I'm not bragging, just saying, you know, for folks who uh, are worried about whether or not you can be healthy and eat, eat vegan. Um, you know, I get out and play soccer with my cousins who are... Uh, I'm not going to say how much younger than me they are. <laughs> They're a lot younger than me, uh, but they don't outrun me. Um, I get all the protein I need. I get everything I need. Um, so thank you for sharing my 17th uh, vegan birthday celebration with me. This recipe has been baked, glazed, uh, vegan, gluten-free, sweet potato wedges. And it's delicious. Halfway between a meal and candy. Um... This is a second episode. Of our show. Uh, hopefully the next episode will come out uh, in a month from now, but it'll be sometime between a month and two months when I uh, get the next recipe decided and you know there everything lines up to uh, to do it and present it. I also wanted to say that we want to see your recipes. If you are uh, making any of the recipes or trying any of the recipes that we put together here on the show, uh, you know, put them out on Twitter or Facebook or social media or your Tumblr or whatever, and uh, tag us with the hashtag Class War Chef. Uh, we'll re retweet them, we'll comment, we'll like them, we'll blast them out there. We really want to see what you're cooking, and also if you want to share recipes. So hashtag Class War Chef. And um, I have just released. Uh, a mini digital cookbook. It's more like a cookbook pamphlet. Uh, it's, you know, Class War Chef Top 10 Vegan Gluten-Free Recipes with two quick desserts on it. It's the top 10 recipes that I uh, cook the most, um, or, you know, they're some of my favorites. Um, you can find it at uh, the store section of my website, and we'll post the link at the end of this. Um, you know, but there's some, some good recipes on there. Uh, the DNA of, of the class war chef philosophy, delicious, nutritious, and affordable. Uh, that's been episode two. Thank you so much for sticking with us, and uh, we hope to see some of the things that you're cooking. Uh, enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Mixing up the medicine, I'm on a pavement Thinking about the government The man in a trench coat, bad job laid off Says he's got a bad cough, wants to get it paid off Look out, kid, it's something you did